Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is the Ravnica Allegiance set review for Black. So before we get into this set review, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm doing an exclusive or early access Ravnica Allegiance uh, kind of a early access event on MTG Arena. So I will put the link in the pinned comment in the comments as well as the, you know, there's of course the link in the description as well for my Twitch channel. If you're gonna come out, hang out, it's gonna be at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, over there. So if you guys see this before then, come on, come on over and visit and we'll be playing some sealed, probably some draft and uh, seeing if we can brew in standard as well. But uh, love you guys and let's get into the actual set review here. Awaken the erstwhile is the first black card here, a five mana sorcery rare. Each player discards all cards in their hand, then creates that many 2-2 black zombie creature tokens. While this is a really fun mechanic, uh, it's each player's, uh, so it's probably gonna be a solid four for me for draft and sealed and standard, so limited and standard. Uh, so if you guys don't see, we have a, a uh, chart down here numbering from one to five, one being awesome and five being not great, uh, or one being amazing, you know, that says on the screen there. <laughs> Either way, very fun card for Commander. Um, not entirely sure what, what this is gonna stick out at in a standard or draft or sealed. Obviously, if your opponent is top decking and you have a lot of cards in hand, this card is amazing, but most of the time that's not gonna happen uh, to the point where this is a super playable card for you. Next to Forest, we have Bankrupt in Blood, a two mana sorcery uncommon. As an additional cost to cast this creature, or this spell, a sacrifice to creatures, draw three cards. I really like this card. Gonna give it a two in limited. And for draft, or for draft and sealed is a two, and for standard, it's gonna be probably at a three here. The reason I'm liking it so highly is because we have Afterlife in the Orzhov format, uh, and there's just a lot of die two triggers right now in the format for standard as well. Um, so going back up to two here for them. Uh, but for limited, I think this is really great, kind of setting off a lot of abilities for you for your Orsoff list, uh, as well as your Rakdos list. Uh, drawing lots of card advantage <laughs> for just two mana like this is super powerful. And it's one of those uh, few cards where it feels like it's almost a little undercosted, a little more powerful than you realize. Uh, so really like this card for that. And again, the art on these cards, uh, the seven cannon art is just fantastic. Next up here for us, we have Blade Juggler. This is a five mana three, two human row with spectacle for three. Spectacle is the Rakdos uh, keyword here. You may cast a spell for its spectacle cost rather than its mana cost if an opponent lost life this turn. So if they lost life this turn, this is three mana instead of five. That's really fun. Whenever it enters a battlefield, it does one damage to you when you draw a card. So giving you some kind of mid to late game card advantage, it is pinging you for one. And uh, that's fine for me for the card advantage. I think it's a nice way to kind of uh, uh, balance this card out. For five mana, this card is not good, but for three mana, it's pretty decent. Uh, that's why the juggler is gonna be at the three slot for us for draft and for sealed. And for standard, I feel like this is probably too slow, so it's gonna be at the five slot. Just not great, just not really gonna see that much play. Uh, but for, again, limited, I think this card is perfectly fine for that spectacle cost, uh, but for the five mana three to draw a card, not amazing. If you had a little bit more toughness or a little bit more power, then I would think, think it'd be a little bit better. I'm moving up here for us, we have Blade Brand, a two mana instant. Target creature gains death touch until end of turn and draw a card. Um, I really love this card. It's just a straight up removal spell, basically. Uh, your opponent attacks out with something, you block, you kill it because it gives a death touch, and then you draw a card, that's nice. But like all of these like combat tricks here, the, some of them are really good in limited and some of them are really terrible in standard. Now this is a five for me, not that great in standard. It does draw you a card, so it is card advantage and it does give something death touch, so that is really nice as well. But I just think it's just not that good uh, in that environment. We could see it maybe change a little bit in the future through brewing, um, but I do think that right now, it's probably just not that great in standard, but super good in draft and in steel. Next up for us, we have Blood Mist Infiltrator. This is a three mana, three one vampire. Whenever Blood Mist Infiltrator attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, Blood Mist Infiltrator can't be blocked uh, this turn. Um, so very interesting as this is a free sack outlet for us. So that is something to keep in mind. So this is gonna be a three for us in draft and in sealed. Um, not really wild about this card in standard, probably just gonna be at the five slot for us in that particular format. Um, it's because it's whenever it attacks, not just whenever it just exists. Um, that would be great if it's just like, you know, sacrifice creature, this is unblockable this turn. That would be great. Uh, but because we have to attack out here, it kind of leaves it open to, uh, you know, die to certain things like seal away or settler wreckage in uh, the standard environment. Next up for us, we have Carrion Imp, a four mana two, three imp flyer. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature card from a graveyard. If you do, you gain two lives. So I like the imp here because it can be any graveyard. So even your, even your graveyard 
that's pretty good, but it's still probably gonna be a four for me uh, for the environment for limited. It's a four mana two, three flyer, that's fine. It gains you two life, that's fine, but it's just kind of okay overall. And uh, again, for uh, standard, Imp is gonna be going solidly in the five position, not greater than that format either, uh, but super fun overall. But again, Imp not really that great overall for me. Um, Catacomb Crocodile, love the name here. A five mana three seven crocodile. It's a vanilla, it's a crocodile. Um, that's fine. <laughs> now, one of the things I will say is I'm gonna put this in the three solely because we have things that have incredible toughness like Crocodile here that can go really well with certain archetypes in Limited. Now, for Draft and Seal, this is great. It's gonna be a, a three, uh, but for Standard, it's gonna be a five. Really not gonna see play in this card that much at all. Um, I do think the Crocodile is fun. Um, that seven toughness makes it a huge wall though in most environments for you for limited. And it usually means your opponent's going to either have to, you know, kind of use a combat trick to get past this card or just have to remove it flat out. Next of course, we have clear the stage. A five mana instant target creature gets negative three, negative three until end of turn. If you control a creature with power four or greater, you may return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. But this card is probably all right. A five mana instant is pretty decent for this kind of ability here. Uh, so clear the stage to me is gonna be probably at a three drop slot. I think this is really fun uh, for limited. Now for standard, it's a little more kind of pricey for that area. So I'm gonna go with a five here, not too wild about that. I do think clear the stage though, is one of those cards where it might just kill a creature on your opponent's side of the field and then you get a creature back, which is really powerful in, in uh, drafted and sealed. So might be a one of for your Rakdos lists or for your Orzhov list, probably the Orzhov list. Next up here, we have Consigned to the Pit, a six mana sorcery. Destroy target creature consigned to the pit deals two damage to that creature's controller. So it's a removal spell, but a removal spell on top of a burn spell, uh, which can turn on all of your kind of spectacle costs as well. So for me, it's gonna be a solid three. It is very expensive in the limited environment, so do keep that in mind. But besides that, I do think this card is quite good. As far as this card's implementation into standard, um, it really isn't one. It's gonna be a solid five there. Not gonna see play, too expensive, uh, even if it does kill something and you know do two damage to something. It's just too much to pay for that particular ability. Next, of course, we have Cry of the Carnarium. This is a three mana sorcery uncommon. All creatures get negative two, negative two until end of turn. Exile all creature cards in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. If a creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So very interesting. I really like this card a lot in a draft and in sealed. It's gonna be helping you a lot against the Orzov list, against the, the white flyers, the one one flyers, the small creatures in the battlefield, that kind of stuff. So. Cry of the Carnarium is going to be probably at a solid three for us. Um, I do like it a lot for that particular format. It could probably be a two for you as well, depending on your archetype and how wide the format actually goes uh, once we get into the actual brewing of uh, Limited here. But just kind of an initial on look here. I really like it. Probably a two or a three for us for a draft and for sealed. And for a standard, probably three again. Worldwide stuff like this is kind of uncommon right now in the standard environment. And this is another one in black. We have Golden Demise. And uh, this is similar to that, uh, but Golden Demise doesn't exile creatures if they die. Cry of the Carnarium does, and that kind of makes the difference here for me. Next up here for us, we have Dead Revels. This is a four mana sorcery. Spectacle cost for two. Return up to two target creature cards from the graveyard to your hand. Interesting ability, uh, kind of slow, especially if you don't have the spectacle cost kind of going off here. Um, so for me, it's probably a three slot for the uh, limited environment for draft and for sealed. For standard, this is a five. This is not gonna be seeing play in standard, just too expensive overall. Um, but for draft and for sealed, putting it at a three. Reason being, of course, is because a lot of uh, matchups in draft and in sealed, your opponent will re remove a creature on your side of the field and then they just don't have any, any more removal for the rest of the game. If you get your creatures back, they really have nothing, no way to deal with them. And uh, Dead Revels is just one of those cards that kind of does that really well for us. Next, of course, we have Debtor's Transport. This is a six mana five three. Afterlife for two. Afterlife is the Orzov mechanic. When this creature dies, create two one one white and black spirit creature tokens with flying. Very, very powerful. A six mana five three that can, you know, trade with something really powerful and then become two uh, one one flyers. Not bad at all. Um, also, the art is really kind of random looking, but it's going to be a three for me in limited. Um, pretty much solid card for us for limited. Good bomb. Going to be able to, again, to trade with something, hopefully, and then give you two 1-1 flyers. I think that's perfectly fine. For a standard, it's going to be a five here. Not going to see much play in that particular format. I do think that uh, it's just too expensive for that format, even though it looks awesome. And I wish more kind of awkward art like this <laughs> made its way into standard. Next, of course, we have Drill Bit. 
This is a three mana sorcery. Spectacle costs for one. I don't like a thoughtsies here. Target player reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. And uh, interesting card here. I'm not entirely sure where this is going to see play at on standard. For me, for limited, I think this is probably a two drop slot. A one mana, basically thoughtsies in the format. It's very powerful. So putting it at the two drop slot here for us. Uh, for standard, putting it at the three, three drop slot or as the like the point system here i do think it might be higher maybe a two uh if the spectacle cost kind of goes off a little more quickly for drill bit it is a sorcery speed spell so it can be done in your opponent's turn obviously so do keep that in mind if it was this would be amazing and of course your opponent would be doing shock lands and then you just do drill bit against that so that would be amazing uh, but very good card overall for that I think it's going to see a lot of play in standard. Probably some good sideboard play for sure. Next up for us, we have Fond of Agonies. This is a one black mana enchantment. Whenever you pay life, put that many blood counters on Fond of Agonies. You can pay two and remove four blood counters from Fond of Agonies. Destroy target creature. This is a very interesting card because it's a very good kind of removal spell uh, as the match goes on. The longer the match goes on, Fond of Agonies kind of gets better and better and better. Um, so it's going to be probably at the three or two drop slot for me uh, for limited. As far as uh, for standard, I feel like it might be a two uh, because you can kind of get more kind of pings off on yourself more reliably in that format um, as far as like in your favor, that kind of thing. Um, so Fond of Agonies for me, a three in limited, a two in standard. I think this is very powerful. There needs to be some deck list that might want to utilize this kind of ability here where you can kind of use it as a, a way to destroy creatures over and over again um, while you, you know, again, just kind of gain and lose life through your Orzhov mechanic. Um, so very interesting for that. Kind of can't wait to see what this ha does in standard if it does anything at all. Next up for us, we have Grotesque Demise, a three mana instant. Exile target creature with power three or less. Very powerful card here. Uh, it's going to be a three for me, though, for draft and for seal. It could probably pop it up to a two if you really want to. Um, power three or less. It's one of those situations where basically anything turn four or before, um, your opponent will probably have something in power three or less. And your test demise is going to deal with it at instant speed for just three mana. That's perfect. You can't really ask for much more than that. Uh, as far as a card for standard, probably going to be at the four or five. Not a two, not big of a fan for this. Probably going to be at the five, honestly, but we'll sit it at the four. Not that big of a, of a like deal for us for the actual format for standard. Just, just a lot more cards in the environment that actually deal with stuff a little more effectively than this card does. But for draft and seal, this card is just fine. Next up, we have Gutter Bones, a one mana, two, one rare skeleton warrior. Gutter Bones enters a battlefield tapped. You can pay two and return Gutter Bones from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only during your turn and only if your opponent lost life this turn. So for me, I really love this card. I think for draft sealed and standard, this card is really fun. Anything with like a recurring ability like this where they can come back from the graveyard is always super powerful in uh, draft and sealed. It basically means that your opponent's removal isn't going to do anything. So the only thing they can really do to block this is to play a better creature, um, which you might be able to remove turn over turn as the, the match kind of progresses. Now for standard, this is kind of a similar ability as well, but your opponent is also going to be losing life as well so getting gutter bones back really easily thanks to like sack outlets through standard means that gutter bones is going to come back over and over again as a great sack outlet for you so love gutter bones think it's fantastic and it's going to see a lot of play uh in probably all three formats there except for us we have ill-gotten inheritance a four mana enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep ill-gotten inheritance deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life you can pay six and sacrifice ill-gotten inheritance it deals four damage to target opponent and you gain four life so very interesting. Um, this is one of those few cards where it actually just kind of pings your opponent uh, turn over turn and you kind of gain life turn over turn. For four mana, it's okay. It's a little expensive. And for six mana, uh, it's uh, a bigger hit. But it, again, it, you lose the ill-gotten inheritance. So very interesting. I think it's probably going to be a, a three for us for limited. If opponent doesn't have a way to interact with this card, then it just kind of sets off our spectacle every single turn, um, which is amazing. Very useful for us because it's a free spectacle hit every single time. And uh, again, paying the six mana is another four uh, points and we gain four. So very good overall. Uh, as far as standard goes, I feel like this is a little too expensive. Probably going to see a four or five uh, for the point system here. Um, I do think that there will be brewing around this card, though. I definitely want to try it myself as well. Anything with like recurring kind of damage abilities, I'm really down for in standard, and I think that it would be really fun. Where this will see probably the most play, probably in Commander, where you have a lot of kind of stasis abilities like like en enchantments that kind of hit the battlefield and stay there for a long, long time. 
and ill-gotten inheritance does that. Next in force, we have Noxious Grudian. I think that's how you spell that or pronounce that. A three mana two two with Death Touch. Very simple, very straightforward. Um, so it's going to be a three for me for us uh, for draft and for sealed. Anything with Death Touch usually means it's a good thing, and it's going to be a headache for your opponent to kind of get in on attacks. Um, so whenever they attack in, you just block with your two two, and then you trade, and that's super nice. As far as this card seeing play or standard it's going to be a solid five for us not that great not that powerful um there are situations where death touch like this kind of comes in play but for standard it's just not as, as well costed enough to really see that much play next up we have orzov enforcer this is a two minute one two human rope with death touch and afterlife for one so here's a death touch card that will see a lot of standard play as well as draft and sealed play orzov enforcer to me is going to be a solid two in that slot really powerful card for drafting for sealed again it's a two mana one two so it's going to trade with something because it has death touch but it also gives you a one one flyer as well so you're trading up basically with this card so similar to how the last card was a death touch with two two for three this is one down it's upshifted in rarity you know and it's one less power but it still has death touch and you get a creature after it dies so very powerful for us i do think for uh standard here it's gonna be probably in the three uh like range instead of the two range still very powerful still gonna see some orzov play maybe some other play as well maybe some rakdos play as well but we'll definitely want to see what this card does in the future uh, but i really love that this has do is doing so many things for just two mana very powerful card next up we have orzov racketeers a five mana three two human rogue whenever orzov racketeers deals combat damage to a player that player discards a card afterlife for two so this is one of the cards where your opponent wants to remove it as quickly as possible because it's going to uh, be able to, again, make them discard cards so that it gets in for a hit. And if it doesn't get in for a hit, you still get two 1-1 one, one flyers. That's very, very powerful. For five mana, I feel like this is quite good. Um, so I'm going to put out the three slot for us for the rating scale uh, for draft and for sealed. As far as standard goes, it's a little too expensive to get out. So I feel like it's probably going to be at the five drop slot. It's not as aggressively costed as it should be. If it was four mana instead of three, I could perhaps see this, this scene play in standard but for just draft and seal this card is perfectly fine very well suited for an orzov list and very well suited for a list that's really going to squeeze your opponent uh and very uh you know make sure that they that this card dies and we get flyers out of it next up we have pestilent spirit this is a three mana three two spirit as menace 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 as menace death touch and instant sorcery spells you control have death touch um so that basically means all of your burn spells have death touch and that's ridiculous this is gonna be a great card for you uh in rakdos in standard but pestilent spirit for us um this is gonna be a solid one across the board for draft sealed and standard um basically meaning you know if you have this in rakdos there is a rakdos card or a red card where it deals one point of damage to everything in the field if you have the spirit out and then you play that everything dies except for your board that's kind of ridiculous um also in standard there are similar effects as well like goblin chain whirler a um, very powerful card for this playing this in a Rakdos deck list as a cyborg tech card against a heavy creature based strategy it's just you can't ask for much more than that and this card is perfect <laughs> i love this card it's also a three two for three and that's quite good as well so very good card overall it's also a spirit so lots of good stuff going on for this card next up we have plague white uh, this is a two mana one, two one zombie whenever plague white becomes blocked each creature blocking him gets negative one negative one until of turn so it's not doing damage to your opponent's creature per se it is weakening it though which means it probably will be able to trade with it um so that's quite interesting um and as well as uh you know whenever this uh comes out and uh, it gets blocked by a bunch of one ones it can just destroy the one ones with the negative one negative one ability here and uh your opponent's gonna learn that the hard way so for me this is a one in uh drafting for sealed very powerful card it's probably one of the best uh, uh commons for black for you to get into as far as this card is for uh let's see for standard i'm thinking the white's gonna be probably a three or a four not entirely possible as far as seeing this card see play i think it's really good though so we'll see uh where this is gonna actually see play out i don't really think it's gonna see that much play honestly in standard but for draft and for seal this is a perfect two drop slot for you uh for black it's something you always want to get into just a great card overall it's basically a, a three one that's all it's saying right now in this list here except for us we have priest of forgotten gods a two mana rare one two human cleric you can pay or you tap it and then sacrifice two creatures uh and then any number of target players each lose two life and sacrifice a creature you add two black and draw a card this is doing a lot of stuff this is one of those cards where i feel like it's going to see a ton of play uh in modern uh but not really going to see that much play probably in standard i do think it's going to see play in standard but 
not as much as modern. As far as this card sees plays though, uh, in uh, draft and sealed, this is gonna be a two for me. Um, and for standard, this is probably gonna be a one for me. Um, the reason I say it's two for draft and for sealed is because that's a little bit more of a narrow format. And this is doing a lot of stuff uh, for sacrificing two creatures. You do draw a card and you do get mana uh, and your opponent does lose life and sacrifice a creature. They're doing a, it's doing a lot of stuff here. So it's a, a huge bomb in draft and for sealed, but it's just a one, two for two. So it can be one of those situations where you play this and opponent just has removal immediately and it dies in draft and sealed or it just kind of sits there because you don't have two other creatures because your deck really isn't built around the card. It's just kind of a card that just exists in your deck list. And that's where kind of standard comes in and makes this card much better. Same thing with modern as well. Next up, we have Rakdos Trumpeteer, a two mana, one, three human shaman with menace. You can also pay four with red and it gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So for me, Rakdos Trumpeteer is probably gonna be a two here. Very good attacker for you in Rakdos. Very powerful attacker, especially because of the Menace here. Menace, of course, is this creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. So if your opponent has one creature on the battlefield, this is an unblockable creature. Very good, very powerful card, especially because it has a fire breathing ability on top of it, making it even more powerful, getting in for three, three instead of one, three. So love this card in the mid to late game. This is a huge bomb. Uh, so huge card for you in uh, draft and for sealed. As far as this card seeing play in standard, it's uh, it's not. It's not going to see play standard. <laughs> this is just one of those cards where it's going to see a lot of play in the draft and sealed environment, but not in the standard environment. Next card for us we have is Spawn of Mayhem, a four mana four four mythic demon. Spectacle cost for three, flying trample. At the beginning of your upkeep, Spawn of Mayhem deals one damage to each creature. Then you, if you have ten or less life, uh, you can put a plus one plus one counter on Spawn of Mayhem. Um, this card is insane. Uh, Spawn of Mayhem for me is going to be probably a one or a two, probably a one here uh, for uh, the actual environment for drafting for sealed and for standard, honestly. Uh, for Rakdos, this is crazy powerful. This is your giant bomb. This is your premier bomb in black. Amazing card, even at costing it four, four, or four mana for a four, four flyer trampler. Great card overall. And being able to ping your opponent every single turn to get that spectacle off again. Very good card. I love this card for basically any environment you're going to see play in. And it gets even cheaper after you get, you know, kind of ping costs kind of going. Um, next card for us, we have Aspire Mangler, a three minute two one flash flyer. Whenever it enters a battlefield, target creature with flying you control gets plus two, plus zero on 20th turn. That can mean itself as well. So very interesting play for us. But this is probably going to be a situation where you're going to have a one one on the battlefield. This is going to turn that one one into a three one. And it's going to be able to chump, ch chump block or trade or pump or something like that. Because, of course, this is a flash creature. So it can come in on attacks or on blocks. Very good combat trick, very good pump ability. I really like the Spire Mang Mangler here. I think for us, for drafting for sealed, it's at the two drop slot. Very powerful for that particular uh, list. Now for standard, again, kind of the same thing. It's gonna be a five, just like how it was for uh, the Rakdos Trumpeteer. Just one of those situations where it's really powerful and limited, but not that great in standard. Next up for us we have is Thirsting Shade. This is a one mana, one, one creature shade lifelink. You can pay three and it gets plus one, plus one into a turn. Very good card overall for us. Probably gonna be at the three drop slot. Really good way to kind of gain life back as well as a way to just, you know, dump mana into a creature in the mid to late game, making this a two, two or three, three, four, four, and so on, if you have the mana to do so. But I do love how this is a lifelinker on top of it as well. We had Veld Shade, I believe, in the last set, so that was very good. Um, this is a little bit cheaper than that, but it has lifelink on top of it as well. The ability to kind of get the plus one, plus one off is a little bit more expensive, but again, lifelink, so it's a nice trade-off. I really like this card. I think it's gonna be quite powerful, honestly, in uh, Draft and for Steel. As far as seeing play in Standard, it's uh, it's not. It's not gonna see play in Standard. It's too kind of overly costed, kind of weirdly costed. It is a lifelinker, that is nice, uh, and it is on turn one, which is nice as well, but I don't really think it's gonna see much play besides that. Um, it could see play maybe in an aggro list, but again, we'll have to see where that kind of goes. Next up for us here, we have Undercity Scavenger. This is a four mana, three, three Ogre Warrior. Whenever it enters a battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do put two plus one plus one counters on Undercity Scavenger, then scry for two. Uh, for me, this is a solid three for drafting for sealed. It's a four mana, three, three, which is fine, but a four mana, five, five is fantastic. It lets you scry for two. That's very good. Uh, in an Orzhov list, this could be a top end bomb for you for just four mana. I really like it for that. And for probably your Rakdos list, this could also kind of trade up against those small pinging creatures in the early game, giving you a 5-5 five, five that lets you, again, scry for two. So really love it for limited for that. Uh, for for uh, standard here, it's going to be at the five slot. Not that powerful, not that impactful to the board state, but still really, really fun. 
Next up for us, we have Undercity's Embrace, a three mana instant. Our opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control a creature with power four or greater, you gain four life. I really like how these are kind of doing separate things. And this is basically ferocious <laughs> as far as the keyword goes. Um, target opponent sacrifices a creature. Very good there for three mana. Like that a lot. Basically Plague Crafter. Um, and then if you control a creature with power four or greater, you gain four life. Again, very, very powerful as well. I think this might actually replace Plague Crafter in some environments uh, in draft or in standard for us. So this is a card you really want to kind of keep an eye on. As far as the card for uh, draft and sealed goes, this is a solid two. Um, I did put it at five for us for standard, but I think after kind of thinking about it a little bit longer, it's probably a four or a three for us uh, for that environment, as it can kind of just be a replacement for Plague Crafter at instant speed against things like Cardish Tyrant, which are really difficult to deal with in standard at the moment. And um, the last card for today is the Vindictive Vampire, a four mana two, three vampire. Whenever another creature you control dies, Vindictive D Vampire deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. This is so expensive for this ability, but it's probably still gonna be a three for the scale here for draft and for sealed, and probably gonna be just unplayable for us for a standard, just because of how expensive it is to cast for four mana. If it was a three mana, two, three, I think it'd be all right, but a four mana, two, three, just not that great. Not a little too, little too slow for the environment. Um, but for draft and for sealed, I think it's perfectly fine. Gonna see a lot of play in that environment, especially in the Orzhov list, and especially in the Rakdos list, most likely, uh, kind of making sure you get off that spectacle, as well as uh, getting some passive life gain as well. But those are all of the black cards for Ravnica Allegiance. Let me know what you thought of them in the comments down below. I'm trying to get out the red <laughs> review today as well, if I can, uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but of course, like this if you like it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon to be notified when a new video on the channel goes live. I love you guys. Make sure to check out the stream for tonight, today at 12 cent uh, p.m. Yeah, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time on Twitch. Comments, or it's gonna be the pinned comment for my link. It's also in the description. Check me out. Love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.